There was one thing left on Mr. Tiger's list. That was for the acrobats to take up, take the sea blue circus tent up to the camp at the top of the mountain. Once that is done, announced Mr. Tiger, we will be ready. Alfonso, you need to take your ice cream equipment to the island and have everything in place for when the gongolong berries are harvested. Please don't forget that I need buckets of ice to make the ice cream with, Dad said. Mr. Tiger licked the top of his pencil and his whiskers. Of course, the acrobats will bring buckets of ice down with them. Then all will be as bonny as only paws and claws can be. While this was going on, Betsy had been busy studying the map of the island, which was spread out on the table in Mr. Tiger's cabin. There was, she thought, a rather big problem which Mr. Tiger may have overlooked. Excuse me, she said, but have you forgotten that the gongolong bushes are on Princess Olaf's side of the fence? Quite so, said Mr. Tiger with a swish of his tail. I have a plan up my sleeve for that. He was about to explain what his plan was when one of the acrobats somersaulted into the cabin. The gongolong stood up, took off his hat and said he was sorry, but he had come to report that the circus tent had gone missing. They had looked everywhere and at last they had found it. Where? asked Mr. Tiger. That is the bad bit of the news, said the acrobat. The circus tent is wrapped around Princess Olaf. We think she had grown bored of sitting at the mouth of the cave, especially after she had seen the circus tent. She is using it as a cloak. The silk trails over the town hall through our streets and nearly out to sea. We don't know how to get it back. This emergency is not on my list, said Mr. Tiger, letting out a loud and fearsome growl. This is where we need the help of Ivan the Timid. Ivan the Timid was that morning to be found paddling in the sea, helping the gongolong fishermen catch fish. He had his trousers rolled up and was the happiest he had been in a long time. He had never, it had never occurred to him that he could be so useful or that the gongolongs would be so pleased to have a giant as a friend. But when Mr. Tiger told him what had, ha what had happened to the circus tent, his knees started to shake, making waves that caused the fishermen's boats to bob up and down. This, old top, said Mr. Tiger, is an emergency if ever there was one. We need you to bring us back the circus tent and to make sure that we have a clear path to the gongolong bushes. Oh dear, said Ivan the timid, you see, the trouble is, my name includes the word t -t -t timid. A, a timid person could, could never do the things you've asked. Perhaps if you could find another word to describe me, possibly that might help me to be more uh, 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 up, up to the challenge. Chapter 15. Mr. Tiger went back to his cabin and came out with a box of thinking caps that he kept especially for emergencies like this. He handed them out to Betsy, Dad, Mum, and, of course, the Toad, as well as Ivan the Timid. These help, he said, to think about words and their meanings. We need a new word that will give Ivan strength. Everyone thought very hard. Ivan the Timid came up with fearful but then said timidly that he really meant fearless. The toad came up with glorious, which had more to do with ice cream than anything else. Dad came up with daring. Mum came up with courageous. Mr. Tiger came up with brave. Betsy came up with bold. Ivan the bold, that's it, they said together. Ivan sat on a rock. He dried his feet and put on his sheep-knitted socks and boots. Bold tops timid, said Ivan, and he stood up proudly. The anxious faces of the gongolongs looked at him. You can do this, they said. You can. We know you can. 
I can do this, repeated Ivan. After all, I am now Ivan the Bold. Crumble cakes, said Betsy. That word really suits you. Here I go then, said Ivan the Bold, straightening out his jacket. The gongalongs gathered to wave him off, but Ivan the Bold didn't move. Perhaps, he said, I should take some flowers, a peace offering for Princess Olaf. A good idea, my old top, said Mr Tiger. In a little while, quite a bunch of flowers had been picked and tied. But still, Ivan the Bold just stood, not moving. What's the matter now? asked Betsy. Why aren't you off? I am thinking, said Ivan the Bold. I am thinking that I need a plan, that my plan needs a small box and that my small box needs holes. A small box with holes was found. The gongalongs waved goodbye and shouted, good luck. Ivan the Bold walked towards the fence, humming a bold sort of tune. The sort of tune he hoped would let the princess know that a giant was coming to say hello.